There is none like Jesus. You can be seated. There is none like Jesus. Fills my heart with love. Uh -huh. There is none like Jesus. And I get to worship him. We get to worship him. If your eyes were just open to see a glimpse of his great love. First thing would be is broken. Then would come forth a flood. First thing that would be is broken. Then would come forth a flood. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you'd have mercy in this generation, Lord. Really, very few people in this generation know anything about you. Pentecost is something that belongs to denomination. Holy Ghost and fire is something that sounds strange. Holiness is something that belonged to the Old Testament. But knowing you, Father, it seems that most are just estranged. Father, we're asking for a great revival of your spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we ask that all the weirdness, all the stuff that belongs to an earthly realm where men scream to the top of their lungs over people running around a football field with a, with a pigskin is the norm. That all that stuff, oh God, would come to an end. All that weirdness and all that flakiness of men. Father, that there'd begin to be a love song being sung in the hearts of you people in the midst of your church, that the falsehoods would be go away. Lord, we know that you desire truth in the inward parts and in our hidden parts where you make us to know wisdom and we'd be able to see you. Holy Spirit, we know that you come for the single purpose of revealing Jesus and making him known. Father, I pray tonight that all the flaky stuff will come to an end. All the religious and ritual stuff will come to an end. People just get serious and real with you. Lord, we know, Holy Spirit, that you're the spirit of truth, and you're not going to mess around with that falsehood, half-hearted nonsense of men. We know, God, that you're only going to mix it up with truth. We pray tonight, Father, that there will be serious hearts in this place. That a revival will break loose. Lord, let your revival fires burn. Lord, let your revival fires burn. Lord, let your revival fires burn. Brighten your church in these last days. Lord, let your revival fires burn. Lord, let your revival fires burn. Lord, let your revival fires burn in your church in these last days. You know, it's so easy to get into the realms of heaven. That's, we, have access into, we, have, we have access by the Spirit into this heavenly realm. All it takes is a true and sincere heart. I know religion is a trap. I know a ritual is a snare. But Jesus is the Savior. He'll, de he'll deliver you from that trap and that snare. So that reality can strike your soul. I pray, Father, right now in the name of Jesus that every mind-blinding spirit, that every force of religion would be broken so that your people would come to be able to know you. You know, there is a lot of people stood around Jesus when he walked the earth, Pharisees, Sadducees, lawyers of the law, which would be the word of God. They couldn't see Jesus. Because the same power that blinds many men today, even those in here in this place, some in this place, blinded them. The power of religion will blind you from seeing Jesus. Because it's false. It works falsehood. God demands truth. 
Man, look, when you know that he's God and you come to worship him as God, give me a break, man. Come on now. Just translate yourself to, the, to that, that place of the throne room. That place that you see that's like as stretched before it, a great crystal sea. <laughs> and everybody that is on it, just escape, find yourself there as one of the innumerable people, innumerable company of people, angels and saints. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, it'll scare you. It'll scare you. It will scare you. It's more, it's more awesome, more fearful, more amazing than anything you've encountered in this life or ever will encounter in this life until you see Jesus. He stands at his church right now. He stands in front of his church right now. People don't realize that, this, but he stands in his front of his church right now, not as a lowly lamb of Galilee, but he stands in front of his church right now, in the midst of his church. He's bright, he's shining with the brightness of God's divine glory, who he is. His hair is white as snow in that glory. His eyes are like a flame of fire. Because he's jealous over the things that belong to holiness and purity and righteousness. But the world has tainted everything, has, has tainted the cares and the affections of men. He stands as the fuller's soap, Malachi said, and as a refiner's fired, who shall be able to abide, abide or stand in the day of his appearing? He should thoroughly purge the sons of Levi, that they may offer a sacrifice and an offering in righteousness and truth. If you want to just go on with sin and iniquity, you better get yourself engaged in the battle, because I'm going to tell you right now, against popular opinion, sin still has the same wage. The wages of sin is death. I want you to understand it's time for you to flee from the wrath there is to come and lay hold upon the living God. Just because it's not a popular doctrine, it's not a popular word to be preached in these, la in these last days, nonetheless, it's still absolute the word of God, which cannot in any way pass away to everything is fulfilled. All men, well, their glory is like the glory of the grass that's fleeting. It's like the flower of the field. No sooner does it spring up and it withers away and it is remembered no more. But the word of the Lord, well, it endures forever. Amen. And you want to get into that? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. It's so easy. You know, Isaiah was anointed of the, of the Lord. And he began to prophesy. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him. There's nothing, there's nothing like the Holy Ghost being upon you. Most people that go to church don't know anything about this. They don't know anything about the Holy Spirit coming upon them that causes ecstatic joy, ex ex overwhelming love. It's a, <laughs> a peace that goes beyond a sense, an amazing sense of, of certainty and well-being. That hope, the same wonderful realm of God's divine glory came upon Isaiah and filled his mouth with the word of God so much so that it is the word of God. It was written down as the very word of God. That's pretty radical prophecy, you know. And then he has an encounter in the holies of holies. He has an encounter with God. And in that encounter with God, he says, oh, no, I'm undone. I'm unclean. I shouldn't even be here. I have unclean lips. I've spoken bad things about people. I've spoken unholy things. I've spoken things that are profane. And immediately, the Lord's got a remedy for somebody who wants a cure. You want a cure? Yeah. You, you want a cure? Yeah. Just a couple of you nodding. No, I'm going to tell you, this is more than a nod cure. This is a desperate need cure. This is more, maybe, this is more than a maybe so. You know, I'm, I'm, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in checking it out. I'm, I'm interested in stopping in and seeing what you got. This is desperation cure. Isaiah had desperation cure. He was undone. He began to, he began to quake before the presence of the Lord. Like Moses said, he quaked. He quaked. Some of my ancestors were Quaker preachers. Amen. And they quaked a bit. I want the Lord, I want the Lord to shake this place. I want the Lord to shake you. I want the Lord, I want the Lord in his mercy and loving kindness to shake. 
San Diego with the reality of his presence. So people that will know that he's more than a religious icon. That he's more than an ideology. Because when they look at us, dear people, they, it, it, the world looks at us and it's, it looks pretty barren, to tell you the truth. It's hard to distinguish most Christians from the world. And that's got to change. You, you have to decide whether or not you want to change. But if you get real desperate with the Lord, you get serious with God, He's going to get serious with you. A seraphim, you know what, a ser you know what seraphim means? It means burning one. A seraphim, that, a burning one that continually screams to the top of his lungs, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who sings his song continually and, with, and, and he won't look, he won't even gaze. Upon the face of the Lord with two wings he covers his face and two wings he covers his feet. He doesn't just plop down in the place and say, take what you get, God. He sees beholding the face of the Lord. So I'm, um, I, I, by the Spirit of the living God, I'm going to declare those things which are trespasses and sins and wrongdoings, misbehaviors, misconduct. And you can either be corrected. God says you can be corrected or you can be condemned. That's what he said. He said if you corrected, if you chastened of the Lord and corrected, then you will not be condemned with the world. That's what he says. People don't want correction because we live in a rebellious age. We don't know how much we're influenced by rebellion. We don't understand how pragmatic we are, how full of the spirit of humanism, how much we're influenced by the God of this world, the spirit of disobedience. But I'm here to tell you. I'm here to point these things out. I'm here to talk to you tonight. So you can get mad at me if you want. It has nothing to do with my assignment. It's nothing going to change anything that's going on in my life. I would, I would rather that you agree with me and that you soften towards the Lord and that you understand that there's a whole lot more right that God wants you to be than you are right now. There's a whole lot more separated from the world that God wants you to be than what you are right now. There's a whole lot more truth for you to live than the lie that's been influencing you that you've not been willing to recognize. I'm going to be a light and sh shine in your dark place. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The remedy is so easy. <laughs> Seraphim is called a burning one. He could have gone over and he could have grabbed the coal from off the altar. It wouldn't have affected him in any way. It wouldn't have like burned him. But he had to go and get a special instrument to take the coal from off the altar because what's on the altar is holy, holy, holy. And though the seraphim has never sinned and nor had any kind of impure thought in any way, done anything wrong that would offend God's holiness, still he can't touch that holy, holy thing, nor look upon it, nor touch the ground where his holiness exists. Yet God has invited you and I in and we take it for granted. Somehow we do not understand. Somehow the deception of this world has polluted all concepts of God and has been reduced to just religion. And that's got to change. And I'm just a voice crying out saying, change now. And you, you, each person, God has given us a gift. We have a gift from the Father. A gift to create our own world. A gift to choose whatever we want. Whatever we desire. A gift to freely choose according to our own wish. But should you have a little bit of insight, should you have just a little bit of wisdom, you would come into this place of grace and choose to let Father create a world for you. You'd choose to let His will be done. You'd choose to let Him reign sovereignly and supremely. When it's just be talking about, oh, Jesus is going to come very, very soon. I, people get all excited and start talking about the mark of the beast and talk about the end of the world. And they get all excited. Well, you better tremble. Because heaven and earth will flee away from his presence. He's a holy, holy, holy God separate from sin. He's made a way for you and I to have our sin and our iniquity purged. We've got to be willing. The seraphim goes, the, flame, the burning one. That's what seraphim means, a flaming one, a burning one. 
grabs a special instrument, a call from off the altar, and comes and flies and touches the prophet's lips and says, now your lips are pure, your sin and your iniquity is taken away. And immediately uh, Isaiah, having received such a gift, says, oh God, send me, I'll go for you now. Today, right now, the blood of Jesus is far more effective at removing sin. And people want to try to walk in with their iniquity. They regard sin in their heart. God said, I will not hear you. If you regard sin in your heart, in other words, you say, well, it's okay. All of us do it. My goodness, we all live in this world. We all got to participate with the pleasures of demon spirits, the desire of a satanic will. Well... We want a revelation of Jesus to strike your soul so that you can see something far better and greater is happening than all that mess and all those things. Uh, hallelujah. If there's not a church, if there's not a church on fire, if, there's, if it's just a church filled with programs and ideas and concepts that want to teach other people about religious ideas and, and religious concepts and, and instead of knowing and interacting with the living God then that's no different from anything else. There's got to be a church who knows and interacts with the living God, who has those things which Jesus described to the woman at the well when he says, if I've got the gift of salvation for you. If you'll come and drink, you'll never thirst for the world again. Everything that you've desired when you've gone seeking after men, people seek after relationships, Especially the relationship of a man and a woman. And they think that's going to fulfill them. She had five husbands and didn't work out. And it was, she had an insatiable need inside of her heart for, for love and for true affection. She said, I got it for you. You're living with the man right now that's not your husband. But if you drink of this gift, it'll be a wellspring springing up on the inside of you. It will be all the things that belong to the Father. It'll be the life of God, the life of the Spirit. It'll be the life of God. I said, the life, the life, the same life that God has. The same life, the same joy, the same love, the same mercy, the same grace, the same goodness, the same truth. Hallelujah. If you could just live in goodness, if you could just spend the day living in goodness, God wants to give it to you, but you have to change. God changes us so that we'll change. Yeah. But we don't want to change. We want to continue doing it our own way, expect different results. It's wrong. They can't do that. I pray that you have fear lest the promise being left of you to enter into the rest, and then you should come short of it. Jesus cries out and says, Hey, all you that labor and are heavy laden, come into me, and I'll give you rest. He says, Take my yoke upon you, yourself, take my servitude. You find rest unto your soul. He says, I'm meek and I'm lowly. I'm here in this place walking completely surrendered to the will of the Father, defenseless. Hallelujah. Letting Father take care of all that I have need of. I'm broken before him. I want, my, I want nothing for myself. Today, most people in here, you spent this day pursuing your own interest. You have. You spent this day pursuing your own interest and God wants it to change. He wants to fill your life. With a wellspring springing up with all the life of God. You, my goodness gracious. Then when, you're, then when you're facing temptation, when you're facing all the assaults and all the things that would draw your emotions and passions to function after the likeness of a sinful and dark world ruled, dominated by evil spirits. You have an overwhelming glory of heaven upon your soul. And God, the Holy Ghost himself, will be the master of everything about you. He'll be the master of your affections, the master of your passions, the master of your will, the master of your emotions. He wants to master you. He wants to be your master. Will you let him be your master? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> oh, we, if there's anything that we've got, to, we've got to return to, is we've got to return to a place of the Holy Ghost conviction. Holy Ghost conviction is found in the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil and arrogance and pride in the forward way. Too many people love pride and for, that's an arrogance and forwardness because that's how you make it in this world. That's, where, that's, that's looked at as being strong. 
And it's the Spirit of the Lord would teach us a whole other way. The fear of the Lord is one of the dimensions of the Spirit, of, of what the Holy Ghost gives. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord without measure, and upon Him was the Spirit of wisdom, and upon Him was the Spirit of understanding, upon Him was the Spirit of counsel and might, and upon Him was the Spirit of knowledge and the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is first seen in Genesis chapter 22, when when when. Abraham went up to really worship. Singing a song isn't worship. It's a consecration of your heart because you built an altar out of your life and you're willing to come now and offer everything as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the living God, to love him with all your heart, with all your might, with all your soul, with all everything that is within you. Literally, the Hebrew phrase at the end of that verse of Scripture is told, told me, told me, old which means with your everything, with your everything, with your mayod, with your everything, with your everything. Could you start worshiping God with your everything? You can't pretend, you can't pretend. See, we've got to pretend. It's got a fashion show going on. It's all about a copyright. It's all about being, a, about a be, being some kind of a star or being famous or having something big and having something from the lust of the flesh. No, this is about an offering. This is about an altar. This is about a sacrifice. This is about wanting the fire of God to fall upon something that's holy and acceptable. This is the worship and what worship means and the offering and the altar. These are synonyms for everything that we, that we now grapple with when we try to talk about worship right now. I'll tell you right now, if you've got a problem, cry out to God. Jesus, not a seraphim, will come with his blood and purge you. Uh, there's there's got to be Holy Ghost conviction. There's got to be the fear of the Lord. You know what God said to Abraham when he offered that offering? He said, Abraham, now I know you fear me because you will not withhold anything from me. See, that's where the fear of the Lord was first defined. Abraham, now I know that you fear me because you won't hold, withhold anything from me. What could have been more precious to him than Isaac? Isaac, the one that was promised to him, the one that would be his his whole future and his, heir, his inheritance, as it were, his promise from Father and Father, so I, want take, I want you to take everything that's dear to you and I want you to offer it to me. Can't be withholding no more. Hey, can't be withholding no more. Can't be withholding, can't be a poser, can't be a pretender. Not in the presence of the Lord. Papa's going to call you out. And you'll do one of two things. You'll rebel and go with a rebellious age and go run over to whatever church is going to allow you just to fit in because all they want is what's in your pocketbook. All they want is another head count, another thing, to, another thing to, to boister their own pride and position. Now listen to me, I'm getting radical, okay? Uh, rather than to deal with truth to the inward parts and to correct you and say you're not right with God. You get right before it's forever too late. People think that God has diverse weights and measures. God hates diverse weights and measures. God's not going to condemn Sodom and Gomorrah for something that he'll excuse today. God's not going to, to say to one group of people, your sin, it, 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 even though your sin is just as evil as someone else's sin, I'm not going to count it against you. That's diverse weights and measures. God takes away the sin and puts it to death. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I pray in Jesus' name that you would take the blood of Jesus and be, be washed, be cleansed, that, that you would be a part of the church that holds nothing back so that there could truly be an altar with a sacrifice that's holy and acceptable upon, to the Father so he can send his fire. I mean, even one a great awakening. You know how this nation was formed? This nation was formed in a great awakening. This nation was formed in the move of God. The Constitution was formed out of a Holy Ghost move with George Whitfield and other men preaching the gospel in such a way, calling people to be born again. Thomas Jefferson was in those meetings. Benjamin Franklin was in those meetings. John Adams said the Constitution will not even work among a people who do not fear God. These are the kinds of things that this has us with this, the basis of who we are. And now we've drifted so far. Go back. Everybody wants to delight. I hear so many people delighting in 
the sermon of Jonathan Edwards say, oh, if there was really Holy Ghost preaching today, ah, oh, it would be a great awakening like in the days of Jonathan Edwards. Go read Jonathan Edwards' sermons. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. You won't even recognize that. You'll say, this is foreign. This must be false doctrine. True, true. Go read the sermons of those men who had great revivals and great movings and outpourings of the Holy Ghost that brought in a great harvest of souls that are the foundation of everything we know today. Go read the sermons of Charles Finney. Go read the sermons of even Charles Spurgeon. Go read the call of repentance that was even in John Calvin's message. You name them. Very different than what we've, what we've accepted today. It's an offense to God what we've accepted today, the way we live our lives and say we write with God. Where people then want to say peace unto you. That your, your, your offense has passed away. No, no peace where there's sin and iniquity, where there's stubbornness and rebellion, where there continues to go on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. But there's a fearful looking into a day of judgment and terrible indignation when God will come with his judgment. He's a loving God that hates sin. People go, I don't understand that. How can a loving God have, be so vengeful and wrathful? He hates sin. He hates it. He hates it like the worst disease that you could imagine. For it is a disease. Somebody said, how can a loving God have an eternal torture chamber like hell? People don't, can't even begin to imagine. They can't even begin to imagine that sin... Is as horrific to God. And sin and iniquity is as horrific as a concept to God as an eternal torture chamber is to us in their thinking. God wants Holy Ghost conviction to fall. He wants the Holy Spirit to be truly welcomed. Yes. Because we so want to walk in His holiness, live in His holiness. Yes. We so love His righteousness, His purity. We so love His ways. Hallelujah. People, we stand at the precipice right now of a great moving of God. We stand at, and it can happen one of two ways. It can happen in the midst of great disaster and calamity. Or it could happen in the, great, in the midst of great restoration. We're we making the choices right now. God's people, the church, are making the choices right now. Will we turn to the Lord and seek Him with all of our heart? Will we be willing to lay hold on those things which He's spoken? Will we be willing to cooperate with him in his plan? Will we be willing to walk in the spirit of holiness, be led by the Holy Ghost? Will we be willing to be converted and conformed to the image of the Son? Would we, 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 we be willing to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him and live the life that Jesus showed us to live? Or will we try to go on in a compromised situation? Allowing deception to creep in more and more. Paul said, when I depart from you, grievous wolves shall creep in, not sparing the flock. We live in perilous days. The church is in peril and few people know it. Where is champions? Where are the people that will cry out to God, begin to fast and pray and recognize that it's desperate times. It's not time to just lay around and say, all is well. We're safe. We're full. We're, we're filled with every good thing and have needed nothing. Jesus said, I'll come to you and I'll fight against you with the sword of my mouth. That's what he said. That's what he said. In his address to the seven churches, it's, it's rare to see today men of God who are willing to take up the address of Jesus to the seven churches in the book of Revelation where he's dealing with the church. And he's making it very clear to the church. There's not two ways. There's one way. It's narrow. And the entry is narrow. And few there be that go on and he's not going to stand. God the Father's not going to stand for those things that would defile that, that which represents his son and profane his name. He's not going to stand for it. And everybody who has his fire on the inside of them, aren't, they won't stand for it either. First personally and secondarily corporately. This is a fire from God. It's a holy fire. It's a fire of true judgment. It's a righteous fire. It's a holy indignation. It's a zeal for the house of the Lord. It eats, eats us up and consumes us. 
And people don't understand. People don't understand how that Jesus, the lowly Lamb of Galilee, who's just trying in every way to call people to come on in to the house, would take a whip and drive people out of the house because the wrong folks are in the house. And so long as they're in the house, they'll profane the house, and the glory of the Lord will never be revealed. And the world would go without witness to God's love and His mercy, which He showed when He poured out and sacrificed the life of His only begotten Son, God the Word made flesh. <laughs> I pray in the name of Jesus that every person here to, tonight and the sound of my voice, those that are listening to me on the web or by YouTube, that you'll decide that you're going to get real with God. Quit playing around. Quit compromising, going back and forth between two camps. You cannot commune with darkness and light. You cannot walk in the truth and lie at the same time. You cannot be a sinner and be called righteous by God. He'll never do it. He made us righteous. Hallelujah. Because Jesus came with his blood. And he purified us and he purged us and he took away our sin and he took away our iniquity. And so now as your sin purged and your iniquity is removed from all of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then that, <laughs> whoo, then that joy overwhelms our soul. It's not just, oh, well, we got to holler because the preacher says shout. No, the preacher's just waiting for the sound of the church, the shout of the Holy Ghost to come forth. And we'll just take any, anything we can get in the meantime, even though we know it's nothing but the strains of men's own throats. And God has purposed that that be a river. Huh? That a river's not going to flow where compromises exist. A river's going to flow where there's a new heart and a new spirit. And the Holy Ghost has come and flooded that soul. And that person has become a holy sanctuary, the temple of the living God, in whom the Holy Ghost walks. Amen. Amen. We believe in God for revival. And we believe in God for a great harvest to come in. And, we, and I'm so blessed that so many of you are coming and, and participating in these things and, and that we're doing right now. Just go knock on everybody's door. Go give everybody a chance because the day is short. Yes. Yes. Amen. And there, there's, only one, there's only one way that Holy Ghost conviction is going to fall upon the nation. There's only one way that Holy Ghost conviction on the fear of the Lord is going to fall upon any community in Southern California. That the fear of the Lord, Holy Ghost conviction, holy reverence falls on you. To where that you tremble in His presence. You tremble like the mountains tremble at His presence. Huh? You rejoice like the trees of the field rejoice at His presence. All the trees of the field clap their hands. Hallelujah. The redeemed of the, the, redeemed of the Lord return and come with singing unto Zion. Zion's not a place in Israel. Zion is a place that existed before Israel. Zion is a place that Paul, the apostle, talked about in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. says, we've come unto Zion, mountain of the living God. We stand before God and innumerable angels of saints. We stand before the spirits of righteous men who were made perfect. And by we stand before Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant. That's where we are right now. But you, as long as you're trapped, as long as you're trapped by a physical world, Influenced by demon spirits and earthly and worldly cares and desires. You can't really see what's going on around you. It's still from you the knowledge of the Lord. It's still from you the fear of the Lord. It's still from you from communion with the Holy Ghost. But when you walk with the Holy Ghost, oh, when you walk with the spirit of truth, hallelujah. When you led by him, when you allow him to fill you, to be a wellspring providing all the very nature and character and beauties and splendors of God to your life, immeasurable and without limit. Huh? Immeasurable and without lack. Continual. Hallelujah. Being filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Speaking to yourself in Psalms. The Hallel must have the Hallelujah must have the Hallel in it, which is the praise. The rejoicing must have the Shimcha in it, which is the ecstatic joy. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, Halil is a Hebrew word, which means praise. Shem is a Hebrew word, means joy. And rejoicing means ecstatic joy. Most of the time when you read rejoicing in your English Bible, it's from the word Shem which means ecstatic joy. 
people get it. You can't make that up. It's just weird if you make it up. Man, when the power of God fills you, when, when, when the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches and the pleasure of this world no longer choking you, man. People trying to praise with a chokehold on them. And they're praising, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Get the chokehold off of you. I mean, amen. Because you won't ever bring any fruit to perfection that way. But just to begin, we just begin to say, go, Papa, I'm, I'm, I've done wrong. I've not walked with you like I should have walked with you. I've listened to the preacher preach over and over again, and I've continued to hold on in my own way and do my own way, and walk in my own self-interest. I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. Holy Spirit, be my master. Lead me, guide me. Be my teacher. Be my paraclete. Be that one that was just like Jesus to Peter. Be that, be that same to me. Uh, Jesus said, I'll send you another paracletos. Hallelujah. Master. If you say that Jesus is Lord, you're saying he's master. If you're saying, oh Lord Jesus, come quickly and take your power and reign. You must first let him reign over you now. So what's different now than then? For you have the same person, the same spirit, the same heart, the same will, the same choices. You say, Jesus, come reign. Come reign over me. Be my master. Jesus said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, comes in. He says, those who do the will of the Father, they're the ones who come in. Even, even to the point where people will say, well, we, did, we had great power and demonstration of power in our life. Devils obeyed us through your name. So, you never stopped doing sin. He said, you never stopped sinning. That's what he said. He said, you never stopped sinning. You never let me be your master. You never let me lead you. You never let me follow. You never let me train you. You never let me develop you. You never let me show you how to resist evil, how to recognize sin for what it really is. He never let me train you in the ways of righteousness and holiness. Let it not be said of you. I'm not going to let it be said of me. I'm giving myself with all my heart. He died and gave everything so that I might live. I'm certainly going to give everything to live. Amen. Huh? He died that I might be made the righteousness of God. Surely I can accept it. Hallelujah. Surely I can give all. That it may be. That it may be fulfilled. I want every one of you, those of you who speak in tongues but don't have the fire of God in your spirit, you need to quit speaking in tongues because I don't know that it's real. I see many people who speak in tongues and they are not baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. So I say it is not real. I say it is falsehood. I say it is a deception. For the, for the uh, means that the passions of God burns within your soul and with your spirit. Yeah. That he's captivated your heart and your interest. True. And you don't half-heartedly worship God and stand around and think about other things, yawn and take interest in all the other cares of this life. Spend your best on yourself. Mm. Provide for yourself. Spend all your money for your house, for your car, for all the things that you want for yourself and give God what's ever left over. It's not a sacrifice that God will fall, cause his fire to fall upon. Read it in the Bible. Start back again in Genesis. Discover that this is not my word nor the word of man. This is reality. I'm going I'm to pull you up. I'm going to pull you. I'm going to pluck you. I'm going to pluck you out of religion. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Amen. That you may be planted yeah. in relationship. Yeah, we got a few eight man. Yeah. Bunch of shocked looks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here's good news. It's good news. You don't have to. Good news. Here's good news. You don't have to live like you've been living. Now, some people, that's bad news. Because they don't want to change. They like how they've been living. I got some good news. You don't have to live like you've been living anymore. Got to change you. Everything about you. I uh, swear the Lord began to deal with me today and now, you know, just to minister to, to you tonight on, on the word of faith. Hallelujah. Uh, I briefly talked on, I briefly talked on uh, the power of faith. His faith is the greatest power, power of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians 1.11, the power of faith. Briefly, briefly talked on the work of faith, the works of faith. 
And the Spirit of the Word is beginning to do with me, talk on the word of faith tonight. But before I do, I'm not, I don't know that I'm going to, because the house got to be straightened out. People's lives got to change. You got to get real with God now. You can't, you can't have the world, Jesus, too. He has no, he's separate from sinners. He's separate from the world. God loves the world. So much so that he gave his only begotten son, but he has no relationship with it. He has no relationship love. He just has a love that reaches out to deliver it. As any person would come to rescue any other person that is in danger. No relationship. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, if you'll obey me, then my father will love you. and We'll come make our dwelling with you. And I, I, can't, in my, I can't imagine. <laughs> well, I tell you. Whew, it's like a river flowing out. It's a, listen, I'm a witness that this is good. <laughs> I watched some poor soul the other night, some poor soul bound by the power of darkness, talk about his amazing, how amazing it felt to be on heroin. And he was describing the slob, the strong sense of well-being, how he could do anything, fearful of nothing. And I, listening to the description of that demon spirit influencing this person to try to give a similitude of that which only God can supply. But I tell you, it's that times heaven. I'm telling you, God has this for you. You don't need to live like you've been living. God has a wellspring that will turn into a river. And out of your soul, out of your emotions, out of your being will flood the inexhaustible expressions of the spirit of holiness. God, the Holy Ghost, who will come forth like rivers. That's what Jesus said. That's, you know what? I want the salvation that Jesus described. I want to yeah. tell, I want to be able to give to people the salvation that Jesus described. And I'm going to labor in this word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to labor in this faith by the Spirit until that day comes where there are going to be willing and obedient people to begin to shine with the brightness of this glory Hallelujah. and run with the fire Hallelujah. of His Hallelujah. anointing. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 And so I'm believing that Hallelujah. for every person in this place. I'm prophesying over you. God made you a new race by the blood of Jesus. And you've been born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Amen. In Jesus' name, live that way for the rest of your life, for the rest of eternity. It keeps getting better and better every day. Yeah, Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Talk to the Lord. No, 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 little patty cake. Do it right. Do it properly. Give it a big... No, I really believe that God's people need to learn how to, they need to be trained to be more expressionate in their love to the Father. I'm very expressionate in my love to my wife. Huh? I was going down the road on the way here, very inspired to kiss her. <laughs> because I love her so much. I've been, we've been almost married 29 years, and so I reached over there and I gave her a kiss. Amen. And it was very good. It's the only kind of kiss I want. You God's people need to learn to be much more expressionate in their love to Jesus. Much more responsive in their interactions with an almighty God who welcomed us into his presence. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, as soon as you step into his presence, you want, you want, you want to jump like somebody hit with... You're going to jump with some, like somebody hit with many volts of electricity. <laughs> That's okay. We're going to invite you. I'm going to invite you in. I'm going to, we're, going to invite, we're going to keep inviting you in. You won't be sad no more. You won't be sorrowful no more. Hallelujah. And this is what we want for you because in the light of God's glory was signed, there'll be the light of his presence, the light of who he is, will begin to sign the midst of the church. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what I want, just, I want Kelly to come, Pastor Kelly come in. I want to just talk a little bit about what we're doing in evangelism. And I want you to understand that what, we, what people have got to be able to do when they walk into a church is they're going to have to see something that goes beyond religion. Amen. Because religion hasn't worked. Religion's been, religion's been dominating pretty much. In this, in this region, religion's been dominating pretty much for many years. 
and then there's three, over three million people here, and there's not very, that many people in church. And I think if you push it, if you push the statistics, maybe 10%, maybe 300,000, maybe 300,000 in this region are in church. I would like to see where they're housed. When, um, when the great ministries like Billy Graham others have come, the, the stadium was barely packed. A lot of people came down from L.A. So and that, oh, that place, I mean, come on. I think when it's overflowing for the chargers and everybody's screaming their heads off and got their faces painted and doing all their crazy weirdness, uh, I think it's like, what is it? What is it? Like 50,000? 75,000. Huh? 75? It does 75? Pack, jam pack 75 in there? So uh, 75,000 people. Is there 75,000 people that go to church in the city? There's three million. Jesus wants to come touch him with his love. Yes. Amen. And if he's going to do that, you and I are going to have to change. Yes. Amen. You and I are going to have to measurably change. Amen. And it's not some abstract change. It's clearly defined by the very life of Jesus. It's unmistakable. It cannot be, it's not lost in semantics. It's not lost in translation. The very person... Christ Jesus is the living word of God that showed and modeled and demonstrated for us that which pleases the Father, that which changes the world, that which makes a difference. Huh? God's people, the church is going to have to rise up and begin to do it God's way if the culture is going to be changed. Right now, Satan dominates in the culture. <laughs> now, that isn't too hard to prove, is it? Just, check, just look around a little bit. Everybody's running wide open for everything that is satanic and everything that is evil. So who's going to join with me? Who's going to join with me to touch heaven? Who's going to join with me to surrender completely over to the living God? So all that's seen in our life is the wonders of his goodness, the wonders of his love. All, all, that, is, all that is first, all that is principled, all that is desired, everything that we want is those things which the Holy Ghost himself can express. And we have no human ability of ourselves to express it. All we can do is, all we can do is holler, but he'll shout. <laughs> all we can do is sing, but he'll praise. <laughs> all we can do is religion, but he can do relationship. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Kelly, come spend some time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you so much. Hallelujah. Well, we're radical. We love Jesus with all of our hearts. Amen. This is not a religious thing we do. Jesus is so real to us. Our relationship is so rich with him. We, we love him so much. Uh, everything that we've been doing on these Saturdays is clearly just an, just an outworking of... of of our heart toward the Father to do His will, to do His purposes, to see His purposes seen on the earth. It's an overflow. It's a natural thing. It's something that pours out like a river. It's not something we're forced to do, something we have to do. It's something that is just burning and pouring out of us. It's a very real and rich and real uh, thing to us, like our worship, you know. Um, I, I, I purpose in my heart when I come to church, I'm going to come and touch a very real and living God. That, I'm, that, that I come into a throne room to worship the Lord. That Jesus is on the throne and I'm going to worship him. And I can see him there before me. And I'm going to worship him and I'm going to glorify him. He's real to me. It, it's not semantics. It's not the thing I do on Wednesday nights and the thing I do on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights. It's a very real thing to me. I grew up in a good old Baptist church and I left all that supposed to's and have to's a long time ago. At some point, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, and God became real to me. That's all I could say when the Holy Ghost and power came on me the first time was, nobody told me he was this real. Nobody told me. If I had any idea he was this real, I would have served him long ago. If I had any idea that he was this real, I would have served him long ago. And I, I, had, I, th I figured that all the people, I, you know, I got in these Pentecostal churches and all this thing, that everybody just knew that. Everybody was experiencing what I was experiencing. Everybody was full of God and they had the same encounter. And then I, I watched over, over the last 15 years since I, I've been in 
full gospel. Churches that there's not a whole lot of full gospel. It wasn't. Like I was I I was hungry and thirsty, and there was a whole lot of people who weren't hungry and thirsty, who hadn't been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. You know, so I don't get that. I, I don't I don't I don't one hundred percent understand that. When I got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, it was game over for me. It was game over for the world. It was game over for religion. I found the very real and true God that I wanted to serve. It wasn't something I had to do anymore. Did you know you don't have to serve God? You know that, right? You don't have to. You don't have to. You have a choice to serve God. You have a choice to give him everything. It doesn't work like it's supposed to if you kind of serve him. If, you, if you're trying, if you're giving him 70%, it doesn't work. It's seeking first the kingdom of heaven, then I'll add all things unto you. He didn't say, seek me 50% of the time, I'm going to add all things unto you. Uh, all things unto you. If he hasn't added all things unto you, if your life's not blessed in a well-watered garden, you're not giving him everything. Because his promises are true, it's real. It's real. And, and I say all that just to say that, that everything that we're doing on these outreaches, when we're going out and we're telling people about Jesus, comes out of that a very real thing. This is going to sound a million miles away from you if you don't stay baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Everything pastor says up here after worship, if you didn't plug in, if you didn't touch heaven, it's going to sound a million miles away from you. You're not going to be able to relate. It's going to be pastor beating you yet again, beating me yet again. You're not going to be able to amen. You're not going to be able to say yes, Lord. Because you're so used to living, living in the fog of the world, he's going to come to you with these very true and real things, and you're going to fight it. You're going to hear the enemy fighting it in your mind. You're going to have excuses for why that's not God and that, why that's not real. You know, our, our, our plea, a lot of the things we're talking about on our, on our school evangelism on, on Tuesday nights, and even before we go out on the streets on Saturday, is it's got to come out like a river when we tell people about Jesus. If it doesn't come out like a river, just be quiet. <laughs> we got enough religious people. We got enough Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses and everybody else spilling what they're spilling. We don't need to be the next person knocking on the door. Somebody needs to come with the Holy Ghost and with power. Somebody has to come that way, right? Come on. At some point in your life, you have to decide, I'm going to give everything to Jesus. I'm going to live fully for him. I'm going to live fully for him. One of the coolest things that's happened from, from hitting the streets and knocking on doors and telling people about Jesus, even people who started out fearful, even people who started out with some timidity, they want to do it because they, they know it's the right thing to do and it really is in their heart. They just had all these things in the way, like what are they going to say if I go to the door and they shut the door in my face, they're not going to like me. All this stuff that goes in your mind, uh, through your mind, you find just, just goes away, starts to get, just to fall off, washes away. You find out what it really was, was just a fear tactic from the enemy to stop you from doing the will of God. It wasn't even real. It wasn't real. I mean, let's face it. We got the statistics. We can tell you how many people, how many doors we knocked on and how many people were actually upset with you. It's, it's about like that. Most people are desperate and hungry and waiting for somebody to knock on the door with Holy Ghost and power and be able to say, can I pray for you? I have what you need and I have it right now. His name is Jesus. People aren't that bold. People aren't like that. They come with their religion and no power. And so that's all people have seen. But when we come with the Holy Ghost and power, what you're going to find, what you're gonna, they're going to find God and they're going to find life, but you're going to find this relationship with God that you never had before. You, that you never had before. You're going to find yourself activated in the kingdom in a new way. You were never supposed to sit there and do nothing. You were never supposed to sit there and only come to church on Wednesdays and only come to church on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights. Wasn't the plan. Was never the whole plan. You made it the plan, but that wasn't the plan. God had something far more. God had an activity and a movement and a flow that was supposed to be going on in your life every day. You'd wake up in the glory of God and be baptized, and that whole day would be about God. And that whole day would be flowing in the Holy Ghost. There would be a constant activity and a constant glory to glory and a movement and a flow to your life moved by the Holy Ghost. We've been... People have been sitting around too long. 
I mean, just been sitting. I was crying out to God about two years ago before we started going hardcore on this and say, God, I love you with all my heart. My life's so good and I love everything about you. But Lord, I need to do something. I'm getting bored. Come on, move me, Lord, move me. You know, I needed to, I needed to, this was good. This was good for me that we got in the middle of this and started doing something, you know. It, you can ask the people who have been involved in this if, if they haven't felt, if they had, their spirits haven't feel, felt activated and their relationships with God haven't gone up to new heights and new levels because they began to do something. And then they kept doing it. They didn't stop just because I knocked on a few doors. I didn't get the response I wanted. That they kept going and their relationships with God actually turned into flourishing, beautiful relationships. We talk about the, the gifts of the Spirit and all these beautiful things. You don't need the gifts of the Spirit if you ain't going to use the gifts of the Spirit. You don't really need them. That It just sounds like hocus pocus and stuff. Oh, that sounds like fun. I want to do that. Why do you need to do that? Why? Why do you need to do that? You know? These things, these, these, things, these things were given to us so we could display God's glory to people, so we could come with the Holy Ghost and power. So that is, that is all that we have been doing in our school of evangelism and on, and on, the, uh, on Saturdays as, as we go out there. If you're, looking, if you're looking for your relationship with God to take off, if, if, you, if your relationship with God is boring, it's because you're not moving. You need to move. You need to be activated. You're bored. I know people are just, you know, you see them on Facebook all the time. I'm bo bored, nothing to do. I'm like, what? <laughs> nothing to do? Are you kidding me? You know, there's so much to do. There's so much to, to, to be activated, especially in the kingdom. We have so much. It's fun. It's not laborious. It's not, a, it's not a, a, a labor per se. His burden is easy and his yoke is light. He gives you Holy Ghost and power. It's a blast. We're having so much, so much fun in, in, in what we're doing. So I, I, I want to I wanna encourage you, on Wednesday nights, we have our School of Evangelism. And it, uh, Tuesday nights, are we doing it at the same time? Are we going to change it? Do we know yet? We don't know yet. We're going to change it at 7.30. On Tuesday nights, we're going to do it at, seven, at 7.30. It's our School of Evangelism. And it's really where we're planning a lot of things, and we want to hear uh, how things are going as you go out on the streets on Saturdays, and we're planning our next big event. Uh, but we're also ministering on some very specific things concerning evangelism, concerning moving and stepping out and doing things. Uh, and it's, it, it's really good, and you need to be there. You, re you really do need to be there. It would, it would change so much about your relationship with the Lord. You don't have to be. You get to be. It's a good thing. You get to be. I'm, I promise you. I promise you. On Saturdays, on Saturdays, we've been meeting at 1030, and we go out for a couple hours, about 11 to 1, and we just start knocking on those doors. And we have two groups that are going out. If you've never done it before, that's okay, because we have a team A that goes out just with our flyer and just starts communicating. It's all written down. All you got to do is really read the flyer. You know, if you've never done it, and you start right there just telling people about what's going on uh, in our church. And then we have a team B that's our, that follows that up in a few weeks. And that is, uh, that's where we're taking it up another level, where we're actually going to the door. Uh, and as Daniel, I love this, Daniel is telling me how, about how he was doing. Everybody's been encouraged to write your own script, as it were. A 30 second, a two minute, and a five minute. Not so you can sit there and read your script to them. It needs to pour out like a river. But we've been doing this just to get you activated. If you're not used to communicating the gospel, uh, you know, every day it's not coming out of your mouth. It's good to write it. It's good to speak it. It's good to get, get, get comfortable handling it, the gospel. So that when you, when, you, when you speak to somebody, it actually comes out like a river, not a robot. It's real. Right? I mean, I, I, I remember a pastor saying something to me, you know, not too long ago. You know, somebody's going to come to your door and read a script, and this is supposed to be the thing they're going to give their entire life to. They're going to give everything, and you've got to read it off a piece of paper? I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, uh, hey, it's good. People are starting, and they're doing something. But you're asking somebody to lay down their entire life for something you're reading off a piece of paper. Something's got to pour out like a river, man. Something's got to be real. I'm going to give my whole life to this. Tyler, when you're in the military, do the guys yelling in your face got to read it off a piece of paper to get you all amped up to do what they're saying? They ain't reading nothing off no piece of paper. It's flowing out pretty loud and clear, right? Because it's real to them. Because it's got to be real to you. 
And so that's, that's how this thing, that's how this, this is for us. That's how the gospel is, to, is, real, is, is for us. I preached to myself every single day. I preached to myself for years. Before I preached to one person, I was preaching to me every day. And as I pray in the Holy Ghost, and then that just starts turning into to rivers where I begin to prophesy and preach to myself. I preached the gospel a thousand times in my own living room before I ever told one person uh, about Jesus. Because that's just, that's what, that's what was real to me. As I begin to pray, as we just get filled with the Holy Ghost, that's what comes out. We stop short too often. We just stop short too often. God wants to pour out like a river and it spill over into prophecy and knowledge and revelation and all these beautiful things, but we stop short. And we stop short a lot of times as the church when God wants us to, to get out there and move forward with the Great Commission, to move forward with making disciples, to move forward. We stop short. We got just enough. We came to church. I feel good. I'm going to go back to my life. I'm going to come back Sunday. I got to get filled up all over, over again because I leaked out all week or whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever happened, right? But if we wouldn't do that, if we would stop doing that, if we just keep going from glory to glory, you would not even recognize your life inside of a month, man. You wouldn't recognize it. It would be so much life and so much glory. And then you'd be like, this is what I was missing out on just because I wasn't participating. Yeah, just because you weren't participating. All you got to do is participate. When pastor says scream, I shout. You know, I'm, I'm doing it. You know, I feel it. I feel the connection of obedience, and I feel the connection that God's like, yeah, you're hooking up with me. It's divine order. It's what we're doing. It's what we're all doing together. You know, it's, it's just, it's awesome. It's awesome. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. On, on Tuesday night, 7.30, to be there at the School of Evangelism because really they go together, what we're doing at School of Evangelism and then what we're doing on Saturdays at 10.30. And we're playing around with some different scheduling. We're doing some experimenting. Right now, this Saturday, we're kind of doing a big day. We're, we're showing up at 10.30 and we're going out from a, a 11 to 1 o'clock. Then we're going to come back. We're going to have lunch. Lunch is being provided. And then we're going to... Then we're going to go out again from 2 to 4 or 4.30. And so we want to encourage you to come be a part of that. And we know we're doing a lot of stuff in the building and, and moving and a lot of that's going on. So if you can just come for the morning from, from 11 to 1 or if you can just come for the afternoon from 2 to 4. It's not that long. That's not that much time. It's a couple hours. If you're timid about it, don't worry about it. There's plenty of people who are going to be there who aren't. We'll team you up with them. You can go out with them. We want to take all your excuses away for getting activated in the kingdom of God. We'll help you. We'll hold your hand. We'll go from door to door. We'll all grab a rope and follow it. You know, we'll do whatever we have to do, you know, to do that. And so uh, I want to encourage you to hook up with that. You know, we're, we're last month we saw, I think, about 50 new people come through the church. Is that awesome or what? 50 new people in one month. In one month. And we haven't even had like a massive, you know, crew going out on, on Saturdays, do, you know, doing this. But 50 new people in a month, that, that, is, a, that's, that is an awesome, awesome thing. I think, I think uh, um, last Sunday alone, I think we had around 10 new people, you know, here. And that's awesome. It's exponential. It's what, the tr it's what we're doing. It's what's going on. Ulysses right here, the, our, I think our, one of our first weekends out, we went out, we're knocking on doors, we're handing out flyers. The very next Saturday, Ulysses is out there handing out flyers, you know, knocking on doors and handing out flyers. That's, that's an awesome thing. That is, that is an amazing and a beautiful thing. I've heard so many stories of people who are, who've come to these, who've been coming on Saturdays just saying, you know, just talking about how thankful they are because they've been so activated that, 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 that for, for lack of a better phrase, they're coming, coming alive inside in a new way. That their spirits are energized and alive because they're using what God has given them. The li there's, just, there's life because they're using it. There, there's just life. You know, God gives more when you're using it. God gives more when you're using Holy Ghost power. Guess what? You get more. When you love joy, guess what he does? He gives you more joy. When you love praising him, he, he rewards that with more presence, with more of his glory. He does, he does that. It's, that's, it's from glory to glory. He keeps pouring out. The more you give out, the more he gives out. He just keeps pouring out. It's just, it's just how it is. So I want to encourage you to be a part of, the, to be a part of those things this Saturday, one, uh, 11 to 1 and from two to four and there's lunch in the middle if you if you come so please come please be a part not absolutely we want to reach we want to reach san diego we absolutely want to reach san diego 
I could tell you so many stories over the years of people who are, were just waiting for somebody to knock on their door. Who, who, I just think of one off the top of my head. There was a small boy and a, uh, 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 an older gentleman. They were going out together and ministering on the streets. And it was getting late and the sun was going down. And they're supposed to come in because uh, we weren't ministering after dark. And, and, um, and the little boy said, no, we have to go to that house. We have to go to that house right there. And so uh, the older gentleman said, okay, okay, we'll do that last house. They went, they knocked on the door of the house. Nothing, nobody came to the door. They knock on the door of the house again. Nothing, nobody came to the door. They knock on it one more time. The door opens and there's a guy standing there. And they just said, we're here to tell you that Jesus loves you. And they begin to minister the gospel to him. This guy just begins sobbing and breaking down and saying, you have no idea. You have, you have no idea. And they look behind him to this table where there's a revolver, a gun laying on the table. And this man begins to tell them, he said, I was just about to take my life. And I'm crying out to God, say, God, if you're real. God, if you're real. Knock, knock, knock. He froze. Then the, then the knock again. Knock, knock, knock. He puts the gun down. Then knock, knock, knock. He goes to the door and opens the door. And they're there telling him. And there's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those stories where people are just waiting. This is not something we just decided to do. There's an appointed time and a divine opportunity of what's going on, who's waiting for you, for you. It's a divine thing, what happens on Saturdays. Who... Who who is the Lord ordained for you to walk to their door and knock on? Can you see that? Can you get that? Can you get that vision? That somebody is waiting for you to knock on their door and communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. And that there's a miracle waiting for them. Thousands of them just waiting. They've been waiting for they've been waiting their whole lives for us to knock on their door. Something so simple, something we can make so small and so trivial. Oh, this is what the church is doing, we do outreaches. No, 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 no. No. So people are waiting. People are waiting for what you have. If you knew the riches on the inside of you, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew what was given to you, mm, come on Saturdays and and find out what that's all about. I want you to encourage you to come on Saturdays because then you'll know. You'll know what the gift of God is. That's probably the most beautiful thing about it is people realizing the gift of God, is them realizing all the beautiful things that God has given us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thing to be able to, to speak and minister with one, just one purpose, one heart, have the same sound in our voice, you know, just because we hooked up with the Holy Ghost and doing what it is He's wanting us to do. And, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to minister tonight on, on the word of faith. It, it's a powerful message about keeping His word continually in your mouth, but I'll, I'll do it on Sunday night. So it's advertisement for Sunday night. You have to come back on Sunday night. But I, I do want to real quickly, I want to encourage all of you right now to receive a gift that Father has for you. Something that's made available right now by the Holy Ghost. It's how Jesus is ministering. And I want you to, I want to just bring, remind you, bring your attention to verses of Scripture like in Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. Jesus said, go tarry in Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father. And are due, endued with power from one eye. He made it very clear that we could not, that they could not be his witnesses until they first received power from one eye, until they were first baptized in the Holy Ghost. And dear people, we have to stop and just be checked in our spirit when we think about this. Because how much more qualified were they to be his witnesses? For they spent more than three years with him. They were taught personally by him. They saw the glory. Peter, James, and John heard the excellent glory, saw the power of God come upon upon the mount that Jesus was there praying in, saw and heard Father say, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. They were those who saw Him crucified. They were those who saw Him rose up from the raised from the dead. They handled Him with their hands. They gazed on Him. If they were not qualified to be His witnesses, How little are we qualified unless we are baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire? You can know that, you know, and and many, many people in Pentecost have said, well, you know, baptism in the Holy Ghost comes with initial evidence, which is tongues. And, And though I do agree with that fundamentally from a theological point of view, it's, it's just as important to note 
that when you baptize in the Holy Ghost and fire, you immediately have the same results that you see in Acts chapter 2, where you are now filled with the compassion of God and compelled by the authority of the living God with the same heart that Father sent His only begotten Son into the world with to go everywhere and preach the gospel. Amen. You immediately leave the upper room and go outside into the streets, into the highways and byways, and you beckon people to come. You have something to give them. If they're sick and diseased, you have something to give them. You have healing and life to Amen. give them. If they're hurt and tormented, you have the power that is in the name of Jesus, the authority that is given by the Holy Ghost to cast out devils. And so we want you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. We want to redefine for you what it means to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And I, I believe that people can be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, but they lose the fire. They lose the flow. They lose the connection. And they lose the connection with the pastor. They lose the connection with the, with the Holy Spirit himself. They lose connection with the leadership. They lose connection with the Word of God that has given them divine instruction. The good thing is, is that Father he gives us as many chances as we need. We get as many start overs as we, as we need, as we're willing to participate in. But more than anything else, I want to remind you, this is the ministry of Jesus John came preaching, saying, I baptize you with water. I want you to know that Luke chapter 3, verse 16 is just as important as John chapter 3, verse 16. Most people can quote John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe should not perish but have everlasting life. And be certain if you do not believe, if you don't live out this life, in other words, you will perish. Luke chapter 3, verse 16, John is, is John now prophesying, I baptize baptize you with water, but there's one coming who has, whose sandals I'm not worthy to unloose. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Jesus, one of the last things that he said was in, found in Acts chapter 1, verse 5. He says, you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. And they were all gathered together. They're in the upper room. Hallelujah. They didn't know what to expect. Did this time will you restore the kingdom unto us of God? They didn't know what to expect. They were there waiting for the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father. The promise of the Lord Jesus Christ to send the outpouring of the very Spirit of God. The very, so that we would have the very heart, the very desire, the very passion, the very insight, the very wisdom, the very counsel, the very might, the very understanding, the very knowledge, the very expression, the very love, the very joy, the very peace, the very thanksgiving, the very goodness, the very everything that He has on the inside of us by the Spirit which He's given us. Oh, hallelujah. My God. My God. Who would turn that down? That's the gift of God. The gift of God is not a religious membership in a denomination. The gift of God is the spirit of the living God. A changed life, a new life, a new heart, a new spirit. Everything that belongs to goodness. Everything that belongs to life and godliness. Every good and perfect thing. Hallelujah. He says, suddenly... They were all gathered together in one place. There came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Whew, whew, as a rushing mighty wind. And filled all the place. Filled the whole place where they were at. Ooh, God. I just, please, do it again, Lord. Do it once again, Lord. Do it once again. Do it once again. Do it once again. I was with Reinhardt one time about in Nigeria. I said, Reinhardt, we were in a prayer meeting together. I was, his Susan was with him. Susan traveled everywhere with Reinhardt, leading in prayer. Rodney was there, and a couple other men, women of God, been used in wonderful ways by the Lord. He said, Come on, man, let's pray for the United States of America. Come on now. Because I'm, because I, you know, I'm from Southern California. I want to specifically pray, oh God, oh God, oh God, awaken your church. God, your church is sleeping. People look at you like you, they, they just look at you like you don't even know what you're talking about. So far, so foreign to the hearts and minds of men. Let's pray, let's cry out, God, do it one more time. 
I was with Will Roberts just before he died. And actually, Evelyn Roberts hadn't died yet. And I said, come on. I said, I said, Lord, would you please pray the prayer one more time? Pray it over me. Pray the prayer that you prayed when great signs and wonders took place back in the 50s. Would you pray it for me? Would you pray it over me? Would you pray, oh God, strengthen, yet, strengthen us yet this one more time? The prayer of Samson, you know. He had run, run wrong. He, he broke the covenant. He lost out on his anointing, this place of God. He was blind. He was cut off. He cried out to God, said, oh God, just strengthen me yet this one more time. Let your glory surge through my body like it did before. Let your presence overwhelm my soul as it did since I was a child. And the Lord did it. And, 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 and Samson wrought a great victory for the, the people of God that day. As the enemies of God were slain by the tens of thousands gathered together in that place. The enemies of God back in the Old Testament were personified, as it were, in men. But they really are just demon spirits. The angels of darkness, people don't understand them. They come in at you blindside, but they're, they're, they're principalities and powers. And I'm going to tell you right now, you and I slay them with the word of the Spirit. This, this, the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. It's, it's that spoken word of God. It's the spoken word. The word of faith, Raymond. I'm mean, gonna have to be careful. I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna get into that. And be careful. Cool. I'll be. You'll be here a little late. I just want you, God. I'll God, the Holy Ghost, to fill you with His word like a river. Yeah. yeah. He wants to touch you tonight with His presence. There came and rested upon them, every one of them, clothed in tongues of fire, rested upon each one of them. You know, people went around. I, I remember the day that Francis Hunter called me on the telephone and. The Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to cause, I'm going to cause this, I'm raised up in the, in the earth, in my church, I'm going to cause them to come to you and you're going to meet them. And I get to work, I was working for a, a, a science corporation here in San Diego and I get to work and call, get a call on the phone from Francis Hunter. She said, hey Mark, I'm coming over to see you. God told me to come and see you. And I praise God for Charles and Francis Hunter, but they thought they could get it done by just trying to teach everybody how to speak in tongues. And everybody gets speaking in tongues, you know, maybe everybody would get changed. But then, then, then I get, you know what? It was good, and, and I'm sure many good things came out of it, but I want you to know God's got, God's got a holy fire that he wants to burn it in your soul. God's got a holy passion that he wants to burn it in your soul. God wants to make you a burning one. God wants you to make. God wants you to make a. He wants to make a, 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 a ministering spirit out of you, if you would. Amen. Flames of fire in Jesus. Amen. They just obeyed God. They were doing what Jesus said to do. Hallelujah. They may, they were they were afraid. They were intimidated. Their doctrine wasn't all what it should have been. They had been fearful. Some had denied Him. Others had run away. But they were there gathered together in that place. And God, according to his promise, faithfully keeping his promise, poured out the Holy Ghost. Whew. Sent the Holy Spirit. And as he promised, out of their belly began to flow rivers of living water. Which Jesus said, in which John commented, rather in John chapter 7, verse 39, this spake he of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given, for he was not yet glorified. We read, as Peter says in Acts chapter 2, as Luke comments in Acts chapter 2, verse 33, we hear him say these simple words. Jesus being exalted by the right hand of the Father has poured forth that which you both see and hear. Jesus being exalted in the heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. Now I added exalted in the heaven just to connect it in John 7, 39 because there's no violation in the text. I want that, I want that in my life. We want that in this church. If you wonder what we preach about, what our fire's about, why we're looking at you going, what's wrong with you? My God, what's wrong with you people? That's what it is about. That's our passion. Understand our passion. Understand our purpose. Understand our determination. Huh? Understand our certainty. We've been apprehended by God. I've been arrested by the Holy Ghost. I'm not my own person. Huh? I tell you, it's the best thing you could ever possibly have. 
but you've got to want it more than anything else in life. So right now, we'd just like everybody to stand with me. I want you to just... <laughs> Dear people, it isn't... I don't believe in emotional experiences. I don't even really like emotional experiences, emotional outbursts. I like Holy Ghost and fire change. I like, I like the, the majesty and the splendor of the power of God that arrests a man in a, or a woman's life. Changes the very sound of the voice. This is what God has purposed. Tonight, Father is giving every person in this place a chance to come clean with Him. There's nothing hidden from Him. Father looks into the hearts of all men and especially those that are standing in the midst of His church. And He's ready to come to you. Lord Jesus is ready to come to you with His blood to cleanse you. I'm telling you when Jesus cleanses you, the addiction is broken. I'm telling you when Jesus cleanses you, the thirst for sin and iniquity is removed. I'm telling you that many people have called upon the name of Jesus as though it was some magical incantation and formula. And it's not that at all. It's the very power of God and the salvation. It's the name that is above all names. It's the power that changes the heart and condition of men. I want you to recognize tonight that your experience is not necessarily that which God defines in His Word. But God is going to give you an opportunity once again tonight to have the experience that He described in His Word. And you choose whether or not that's what you want or whether you want to hang on to your security that you have vested yourself with, whether it be true or whether it be false. Tonight, let the Spirit of the Lord come to you with His loving kindness and His Holy Ghost conviction and begin to shine floodlight of heaven upon your soul. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, now in Jesus' name, Father, I thank you that every person in this place is arrested by you. I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that every unholy thing, every power of every religious spirit, every power of every unholy thing has no ability anymore to work. In Jesus' name. Father, that those who stand in this place with a sincere and true heart, that right now, we ask you now, we ask you now, Father, we ask you in your, your wonderful, loving, kindness and tender mercy let truth come here let truth come into the hearts of the people standing in here father i pray for a holy ghost conviction right now father i pray for holy ghost i pray that a sacred reality of your presence and of what you've purposed for each person's life would suddenly be revealed lord jesus lord jesus lord jesus Lord Jesus, forgive us of our sins and our trespasses against you. Father, we thank you that you provided a means which our souls could be cleansed and washed from every stain of sin and every power of darkness. Father, we want that cleanness that only you can give and that only you provide. Father, we pray that no longer will men allow themselves to come stand in your presence and cover sin as Adam did, but that their response to you would be rather like Isaiah's. If there's wrong, if there's things that are undone in their life, they'll get right with you while there's a day and an opportunity. That men will no longer turn their heart from correction, but we yield completely to correction, recognizing that you chasten every son that you receive and you correct them. Oh God, that every man, every woman will allow themselves to be judged by you, that they will not be condemned with the world. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you come to judge. You the judge. Judge me now. Judge us now. That we might that we might repent, that we might turn to you with all of our hearts. Oh, God. 
Forgive us of the false pretense. Forgive us of God of the pretend. Let there be sincerity and truth in our lives, oh God. Every place that we've allowed deception to work, everything that has been false, oh God, we renounce it. We don't want it anymore in our lives. Lord Jesus, we want you to be the fuller soap in our life. We want you to be the refiner's fire in our lives. Jesus, we thank you that you came, you died for us at Calvary's cross. That we might have our sins washed away in your blood. Now being dead to sin, we might live under righteousness. Father, we give our heart to you, God. You see, oh Lord, the state of our city, the state of our nation. Lord, you see how dull we've been and, and, and how little compassion we've had. Both for our own state, the state of the church, and even more, the state of the lost. Lord, we come to you and we ask you to change that about us. But I ask you to change me. Lord, I ask truth to be ignited on the inside of me, oh God. Lord, I ask your fire to be ignited on the inside of me. I ask you to baptize me, oh God. Overwhelm my soul with your divine presence and glory, Lord. Lord, that I never live another day, another moment for myself, oh God. But finding my life completely hidden in you. Fulfill everything that you've desired and planned, oh God. And may this be that which your church speaks out. May it be the voice heard today, now in the earth. May truth come. May your fire burn. May your holiness overwhelm me, child. Sua pai. Ite kuanama. Ipropan. Now. Every false thing, obey me. Every lying thing, obey me. Every oppressive thing, obey me. You leave now. You leave the property of God. Father, we thank you that you've washed your church with your word. And Lord, that these people in this place will cry out for your word because you wash and cleanse your church by the washing of the water of your word. That there will be no one that resists your word or resist the spirit of truth that no matter how fiery it comes it will be welcomed by everyone that stands in this place Father I pray in the name of Jesus that men will have an appetite for truth Father I pray in the name of Jesus that falsehoods and lies will no longer be allowed to work but that your glorious light will reveal the truth. That your light will make manifest. Tonight, God invites you to come into the light. When the word goes forth, it's the light that shines bright from heaven. And men will not come to the light because they love darkness. Men refuse the light because their deeds are evil. Never let the word go forth and try and then hide or resist or, or turn a heart of interest away. But recognize that the word, the floodlight of heaven comes as the word of God and that you want that light to shine fully and brightly upon your life so that everything may be changed and everything addressed And everything conformed to Christ Jesus, the light of life. Thank you, Jesus. That the fires of the Holy Ghost burn in your life. 
Let the baptismal ministry of Jesus Christ flood your soul and your spirit. Let the personal interaction with Him be that which is your delight and that which you know how to experience and lay hold upon every day. Let the fire of God try you, reveal to you the truth of that which He demands. Let the spirit of holiness have full reign, full course within everything about your life and your thoughts and your thinking, your speech, your conduct of living. And let revival begin in your heart this night. Let revival begin in your spirit this day. Let change, this a lasting change, take hold of you. And let God make a mouthpiece of your spirit. Let God make a mouthpiece of your life. And let the floods of revival, let the floods of his word, let the floods of the gospel fill this land once again. Father is giving to you and to me, to the people across this nation, everywhere his word is being preached this day, an opportunity to stand as big and as tall in the move of the, of the Spirit as any generation before us. Tonight we are choosing, once again, tonight we are making a decision. Tonight we're making a request. Tonight we're bringing a petition. But more than that, Father is petitioning us. We may cry out with our spirit, awake, awake. Put on your strength as in the days of old. But Father returns the call and says, Awake, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments. Put on your robes of righteousness. Put on your glory. Put on my presence. This is what we will do. This is what we will do. God is our witness this night that we vow ourselves and we pledge ourselves. This is what we will do. This is who we will be. That we will live for Him. There'll be no place found in our lives except for the influences of the Holy Ghost. Being those baptized in His presence. One day, a Presbyterian minister named Jonathan Goforth read John 14, 12. And in an honest heart, after reading John 14, 12, they said, If anyone believes on me, these works that I do shall he do in greater works than these. Jonathan Edwards, in an honest and sincere heart, having graduated from seminary and receiving all of his credentials and having many reasons to believe that he could justify himself, said, I have never done any of this. I have never even done his works. And in an honest, sincere heart, he got down upon his face and began to cry out to God and seek God in truth. And even a Presbyterian preacher who takes a hold of one verse of Scripture and gets real with God changed the whole nation. Jonathan Goforth was used by God in a great way in the nation of China. Changed the whole region of China and part of what was going on in the revival of Korea in that day. God's not changed. His word's not changed. His response to the cries and the prayers of his people have not changed. Nothing's changed about God. Nothing's changed about God. Let the same heart and let the same cry be in our spirits from this night forward. Let there be a demand in our hearts, a hunger and a thirst and a plea. I say, have you tasted the good things of heaven? I say then, it only depends on how hungry you are. Have you drank of the things of the Spirit? It depends 
and how thirsty you are. Tonight, let the baptism of the Holy Spirit that begins to produce all God's desires, all God's passions, all God's wants and wishes take hold of your life. And let that be the measure as to whether or not you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Let that be the measure as to whether or not you remain there in that place of relationship with Him. And I declare to you with great certainty that if you should decide these things tonight, that God will show Himself mighty upon your behalf and upon our behalf and this nation, this place, this place will be shaken. I tell you, I tell you by divine revelation, this place will be shaken. Not a single soul in this place will live a small life for Jesus. But you will burn with the glory of his presence and your life will be counted in the number. Of those who lived fully for God. Of those who sold out for one purpose. Let it be said of this nation. Let it be said of this generation. That God's not anywhere near done. That the purposes of Christ Jesus have not even come close to being fully realized. And his plan fulfilled. But that we tonight, with one heart, with one mind, with one soul, with one heart, with one purpose, lay hold on the will of the Father to do his will. That Almighty God may have his way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Break me, melt me, mold me, shape me, break me, mold me, melt me, shape me, break me, melt me, mold me, shape me, break me. Melt me, mold me, shape me, break me, melt me, mold me, shake me, fill me, fill me now. Oh God, Lord, fill me, fill me now. Oh, Lord, fill me, fill me now. Oh, God, to do thy will. Oh, Lord, thy will. Oh, God, to do thy will. Oh, Lord, to do thy will. Oh, God, to do thy will. Break me, melt me, mold me, shake me, break me, melt me, mold me, shake me, break me, melt me, mold me, shake me, fill me. Fill me, fill me, fill me, Lord. Hallelujah. Fill me, fill me, fill me, fill me, Lord.
I yield myself to you, my Lord. I yield myself to you, my Lord. Here I am, send me. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled. Be baptized. Be overwhelmed right now in Jesus' name. Be filled. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive right now. Receive right now. I said receive. Receive right now. Receive right now. Receive the promise of the Father right now. Receive the baptismal ministry of Jesus Christ right now. Receive. Receive the fire of His presence. Receive right now the glorious wind of His Spirit. Receive right now. Receive right now. Anybody wants prayer, I want you to come right now and pray for you. Anybody, you got addictions going on in your life, you got strongholds going on in your life, you just you got you got needs going on in your life, there's things you want to see changed, there's things you want to see broken. I want you to come right now. Come right now, just come quickly. Just lift your hands towards heaven, let God touch you as you come. If you're not right with God, if you've not been walking right with God, I want you to come right now. If you need to give your life over to Jesus Christ, I want you to come right now. If you're determined to live in the fires of God, the Holy Ghost, I want you to come right now. If you're determined to be overwhelmed by His presence continually, I want you to come right now. Just come right now. Come right now and present yourself before God. Present yourself at the altar of God. Come right now. Come right now. Let the Lord change you. Now, change comes in Jesus' name. Now the fire of God upon you and the call upon your family. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. Fire of God upon your family. The fire of God upon your family. Now in Jesus' name, I break every stronghold off your life. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, every stronghold of condemnation, every afflicting, tormenting thing, I break it off of you so that you can begin to find yourself joying and rejoicing in Christ Jesus. Fire God. Now, in Jesus' name. Fire God. Fire God upon your life. Fire of God upon your life. Fire of God upon your life. Fire of His presence. Fire of His presence. Fire of His presence. You must yield your heart to Him. You must yield your heart to Him. You can't hold on to your life and have Him. You're going to have your life and you're going to live the life of David Graham or you're going to live the life of Jesus Christ. You have to choose. It's two different lives. You cannot hold on to your own life and have his life. Just surrender your life to him tonight. Just 
Surrender your hand. Send your hand. Surrender your life to him tonight. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Just send your, surrender your life to him tonight. I surrender my life to you, Lord Jesus. I don't want my life anymore. Lord, let your fire burn right here. You hear David's cry, oh God. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Fire of God. Fire of the Holy Ghost. The baptism of fire. The very life and nature of Jesus Christ takes hold of you tonight. So, I'm not kidding. So, you know, see to you. Fire God. Now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. Fire God. Fire anointing. Ever increasing. Fire anointing. Now in Jesus' name. Fire God. Now, in Jesus' name, every afflicting, tormenting thing, I bind you. You no longer hold this life back in Jesus' name. Now, I let you go from your prison. In Jesus' name. Tonight, the fire of God begins to burn upon your life. I said the fire of God begins to burn upon your life. The fire of God begins to burn upon your life. You cannot live like you've been living anymore. Fire God. Now in Jesus' name, I command you to be healed of your affliction. You foul spirit of affliction, I command you to go. You feel the spirit. Jesus' name, you tormenting, harassing devil of hell, I break your power, I command you to leave this life. Soon the love Akatayani. Filled. Sutaranashate. Fire of God upon you. Jesus' mighty name. The fire of the Holy Ghost burns in your life. You foul, tormenting spirit of depression. You tormenting thing of hell. I bind you now in the name of Jesus. You spirit of sorrow. You go. La Satana Kishte Peranai. Fire of God. Iraba satai, irastai limina copain. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of the living God, to live for Jesus now. Now in Jesus' name. Now in the name of Jesus, the fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Laura Paina Sapaida. Be no longer of two minds, but of one. Ishipaya. Ishipaya no sotoye. Fire God upon your life. Ishujara Namrede. Fire God. Now, baptize. Baptize in the Holy Ghost and fire. Fire the Holy Ghost. The fire. From the crowd of your head, the souls you see. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Fire of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nothing else matters but the purposes of God. Nothing else matters but the will of God. Nothing else matters but the will of the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Faith arises. The light shines bright. In Jesus' holy name, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Ursatai. In the name of Jesus. Fire. The fire, the baptismal fire of the Holy Ghost. In that name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Ishababotuil Monday, Masai Propo, Ecti Shatekataide the Nadoto. I break every power of darkness, everything unlike God. 
i sejdul i nasafra i gæsetal. That the freedom and the glory of heaven that God has assigned for your life may be fully realized in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name, I break the power and the stronghold of every claim of Satan from off your life. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ upon you. Now Satan, you leave the property of God alone. Now in Jesus' name, the fire of the Holy Ghost burns upon your life. Fire of Jesus. Holy Ghost ministry begins to burn upon your life. Maria stupai ninga pata ilebepe. Urababa birebe balipo. Biaraba saile mangano. Mandulo manishe. Mari sutai gatai. Arabusuti. In the name of Jesus. Now, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, in Jesus' name. Ev sopran. Erite. Monster. Now, thank you, Father, for the anointing. Every batosi, Sierra Gadi, Pieroco, Arabasata, Ilekehashapa, the fire, the fire of God, the, the fire. I break the power of every addiction in the name of Jesus now. Here's so pile in my host, fire of God. Now in Jesus' name, and now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, now I take a hold of every claim of Satan, and I break its authority off your life that cannot claim you. Cannot claim your mind, your heart, your affections, your life, your soul. In the name of Jesus, be baptized in the glorious realm that which God uses to protect us, keep us, and anoint us. His glorious presence. Right now. Right now, right now, right now, I release you, now, in Jesus' name. Be filled, be filled that your cup may overrun, that your cup may overflow with the goodness of God, ah, that the joy of the Lord may flood and fill your soul. Be filled. Right now, in Jesus' name. Freedom to know and freedom to flow in His goodness and His grace. Uh, the ability to hook up in that divine realm of the Spirit. To no longer live your own life, but to joyously live the life that He has given to us. That He purchased for us at Calvary. Hallelujah. Now in Jesus' name, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Changed. Changed by the power of God. Changed. Changed by the power of God in Jesus' name. Changed the fire of God. Ishekina, the fire of God. Ishekina, Yasotolanai, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Very Tasotonikik, Mandalo Bopaya, Masata, Mesa Pino, Sotoy Rehisht, Malate Rehe, Hallelujah, Masara. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire, Mosaic take on him. Now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now in Jesus' name. Changed tonight. Now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, fire the Holy Ghost. Fire that wonderful ministry of Jesus, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and fire upon you right now. Now in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name, receive. <laughs> receive. I break every claim of the enemy off your life. Now, just receive. Out of your belly flows these rivers of the Holy Ghost, this glorious anointing of the Holy Ghost and fire. In Jesus' name, the very passions of Jesus Christ, the very life and goodness of the Holy Ghost burns within your life and heart right now. Receive. Hallelujah. Lura stare mengo stakere teia. Hallelujah. 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 Now, in Jesus' name. Now, now. Nasa. Ekela. 
Asate, Nekona, Ekekuna, Akere, Ek to Statian in a Metisitan. Er Statar and Poki and Anger to Stai. Musta, Membrebe Betty. The fire, the Ghost. The fire of his presence. Bia Dosa, receive right now. 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 Bolsonani. Receive right now. Luridai is the Becky Day. Receive right now. Bodostakalaya. Receive right now. Receive hunger and thirsting in your soul. Receive right now. Father, we thank you for this wonderful gift of promise. We thank you for this wonderful gift of promise. We thank you, Father God, that your people have been willing to build an altar here. Allow an altar to be built. A place, oh God, where a holy sacrifice is acceptable unto you may be there presented that your fire may fall upon it. For be sure of this, God's fire will not fall upon a sacrifice that is not right. The heart has to be right. But the fire of the Holy Spirit is here to consume every life, every heart that is willing to go all the way. To take complete control. <laughs> to master every part of you. So that every dimension of your life might reveal the goodness of this life of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mandos to get in English teredai. Eri mandolo paradaya. Non dai eshut. In the must. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. You'll know when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Because immediately what will begin to happen is the same things that's in the Father's hearts will fill your life. As you begin to be willing to be obedient to God and just begin to seek Him, begin to turn your heart towards Him. Watch what takes place. He'll take over your emotions, your passions, and He truly will become all your delights. Hallelujah. Preacher won't have to tell you to shout no more. Preacher might have to tell you, be quiet for a few minutes, let me speak. Father, we thank you for this anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for this glory cloud of heaven that's here in this place right now. Hallelujah. Now, I just want to encourage you to just live here in this realm. You can live right here in this place. You do not have to leave this place. You do not have to leave the lost the good in Libra. You do not have to leave this realm of glory. Hallelujah. If you'll stay here, you'll stay here. <laughs> Your soul will be fully satisfied. You'll have room for nothing else. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. When you stay full of the joy, sorrow can't get in. Hallelujah. Who got the bajula mada? Mana nengade. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Yes.
Hallelujah. <laughs> well, we want all of you to be confident and certain about the things of the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't just, just stay, just stay. I don't know how to say it in any more effective way than just stay right here in this place. Stay in the place of thanksgiving and praise and joy and rejoicing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Stay in this place of hunger and thirst. Stay in this place of His presence. This is where every good thing is. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not going to have a, we're not going to have the Friday night meeting tonight in honor of Valentine's Day. We're not going to do order in the house. We're going to hope that they're going to have order in the house by God taking if you're married your sweetheart out somewhere. And uh, <laughs> but when, a, a week from this Friday, we'll pick it back up, but we're going to start with the School of the Spirit a week from this Friday. Sunday morning, we'll be here believing God that many people are going to come in and they're going to encounter the living God. They're going to come under Holy Ghost conviction. They're going to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen. Why? Why? Because you're willing to participate with the Holy Spirit and allow His river to flow out of you. And if, and, if, and, if, and, if, and if you think tonight is about anything other than that, then you're religious. You don't know that there was an event that was supposed to take place that now is ongoing and that never runs dry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want you to find the realm that never runs dry tonight. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> A river that never fa fails. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A stream that always flows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And with that flow coming of the, of the Holy Ghost coming out of you, anybody who walks in this place, their life would be changed. We would be believing God that you'll come on Saturday full of the Holy Ghost, that it would be Pentecost, that you'll have Pentecost in the morning before you get here. You want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire? Then you need to be baptized every day. If you're not willing to be baptized every day, somebody said, well, I lost the English language when I first was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, you need to lose the English language every day. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it needs them to excel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then Sunday night, you do not want to miss Sunday night because if the Lord releases me, and I believe that he will, about the word of faith, it's going to be a big challenge to some of you because many of you have never stepped out in faith. You just never. There's people. The Lord told me today concerning some people that have been around here for a long time. said that they've never stepped out in faith. They've never stepped out beyond the realms of their own ability. They don't know what it is like to live in the uncomfort zone of having to trust God solely. You know, you've never been out that far. Now, preachers get out that far and that's why they begin to grow and mature. But everybody else sits around, they're not willing to go out that far. Because they'll just worry, 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 worry. Concern, concerned, oh no, oh my God, oh my God, we're gonna fail. Huh? Because you've got to get over that. Did you know that? You gotta grow. You've got to confront adverse situations to be able to learn how to deal with them. You do. As long as you're sitting in the honeymoon honeymoon suite being taken care of, huh? Are you with me? As long as you're a child in father's house and you never had to do, had to think about anything. You know what I, you know, you, somebody else take care of you. And, if, and that's just fine if you want to be a baby all your life in the kingdom of God. But if you want to grow and mature and begin to be used by the Holy Ghost, you've got to grow and mature in faith. And they know, there's no way that's going to happen until you get beyond the realms of what you can do. You've got to get out there trusting God for things that is impossible for you to make happen. And you've got to do it to the place that no longer do you worry and wring your hands and get down on your knees and pray, oh God, you see our situation, oh help us, help us, help us. But now you're moving in faith, this is the way it's going to be. Amen. Huh? Yes. Are you with me? My yes. wife's with me. Yes. Huh? Because we went through a lot of that together. We stood side by side saying, no, 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 no. God, God will do this. I know we don't have, I know that we don't have a tenth of what we need to get the job done that we've already committed ourselves and put ourselves out on the line to do. We don't have a tenth of it, but God will do it. Don't worry about it. And one day I had to come to my wife and I had to say, honey, have you been worrying? And she said, well, I've been worrying a little. I said, well, that's stopping the flow and the supply. You can't do that. Now, I'm not blaming you, okay? She cried a little bit, you know, because she felt like she was the one messing everything up. I said, no, 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 no. You are messing everything up, but we can get this right. <laughs> 
See, and, and, and because you, know, you just got to be willing to be corrected. She said, okay, honey, I'm, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. I said, baby, just hide behind me. You could sir, just get behind me. Uh, we got we to, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to do this or die. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. And so we want to, want to encourage you and get you out there and get you out there. You, you find a place to get out there, trust in God. Get yourself way out there. Beyond the, your own human ability huh, to provide financially. Do it financially because a lot happens there. Huh? Come on. Huh? You step up and you say, Lord, I'm taking care of it. I'll take care of it. Father, I'll do it. I'll go where you want. Well, they say, well, it's going to cost you $150,000. Well, I'm not scared of money. Well, you don't have it. I'm, I'm, that's fine. It's God's business. It's what he's told us to do. We're going to go do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I never stepped out like that um, in a big way for my own house and for my own provision, for my own needs, for my own car, huh? for my own purpose. I stepped out that way for the kingdom. I stepped out that way. We stepped out that way on a number of different occasions in, in terms of investment because we said, Lord, we know that this will do so much. We could take this and turn around to do so much. And Ann had to do her washing under an oak tree. We, put the, we, you know, we didn't have to go that far, but I did. I mean, we put, she put the washing machine underneath the oak tree. We put up a fifth wheel. And we were running with revival. It was, we just, it was just the first time we'd ever invited Rodney and a few other people into town. And we were out there, man. It was pretty hectic, huh? It was awesome. It was, it was camping. <laughs> we said everything with total abandonment. With total abandonment. We were living... Literally living in, it's like living in, living in a fifth wheel in a very small thing, taking a shower from a stream that came out of a creek, and it cost us twenty thousand dollars a month to do it. Can you? Can, does that make sense? It cost us twenty thousand dollars a month because that's what we had to come up with to take care of all the, the bills and debts to be able to do that because we saw a vision to grow the thing, you know. So you just, if you'll do that, if you'll step out there. Hey, that's where, you, that's where you engage. That's where you get strong. You're made, you, you, vax, you wax valiant in fight. You don't wax valiant in flight or you don't wax valiant sitting around doing nothing. You've got to get into the program. You've got to run the race to win. You've got to hook up with a good fight of faith. You've got to get there in the crucible. You've got to be in the crucible, in the press, where it's on you, man. It's on you. You're not looking at somebody else. It's on you. And then there came a day where my wife said, hey, honey, just stand behind me. I got this one. Just stand behind me. Hey. Come on, man. It's a good, this is a good life. This is the greatest life. This is the best life I could have chosen. And I'm, it's like I'm just getting started, and I want you guys to get into the full thing, the full swing of it, because I'm telling you, there's nothing better going than living fully for the kingdom of God and finding yourself to ultimately be a champion in the house of the living God. Amen. Amen. Nothing greater. Hallelujah. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What better promise, what better vision, what better thing could you labor for than that? Amen. 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 So praise God. We want you to worship the Lord tonight with your offering. This is the best offering right here. The offering of yourself, presenting yourself. Giving yourself without, without, without restraint. Giving yourself. Give yourself to God. You also do it with your finances. It adjusts things in our spirit. You believe me, it does. We lay it all out, there, all out there on the altar. We say, okay, Father, I'm going all the way with you. And so do that. Worship the Lord with your money as well, your finances. With your pledges, just go out there. We're, we're, we're believing God for some big things here. We're good. They've already started working on the building across the parking lot. They're building a beautiful sanctuary over there. It's this big enough for us now with plenty of room to expand. We're going to fight this good fight of faith. We're going to put this, we're going we're to see what God will do. I'm going to tell you, you get into this thing and you fully agree with us with everything and we will get whatever we ask. Whatever we ask. When the, when, if you just, we just hook up. Whatever we ask, Papa do. And I'm asking for this nation. I say, oh God, Give me the heat and the loss for my inheritance. And give me the uttermost parts of the earth for my possession. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <laughs>
Hokashi Lingare Day.